<laughs> which is the Raiders head coach, Antonio Pierce. He yes. spoke about his approach to defending division rival Patrick Mahomes, and he brought up an interesting comparison. Here's Antonio Pierce. We got the Jordan rules, and we, we, I'm calling it now from now on, as long as I'm here, the Patrick Mahomes rules. Okay. So you remember when Jordan was going through it with the Pistons, all those guys in the 80s before he came, Michael Jordan, Air Jordan, the Pistons used to whoop his Anytime he came to the hole, elbows, yeah. filling them, love taps. We touched them. We in the head, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I'm touching you. Spiritually. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Spiritually, homie. Yeah. Are the Mahomes rules going to work for the Raiders? Okay, uh, listen, I appreciate that Antonio Pierce was a violent defensive yeah. player. He's a good linebacker. Yes. And I respect it. I see Crosby sitting next to me going, oh, yeah. yeah. And I dig it, and I'm down with it. I would just caution Antonio Pierce this. And he's right. Detroit bullied Michael Jordan oh, as much as they could. And obviously, and they won a couple NBA titles while they were doing it. Here's the problem. When they bullied Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, they spent the entire offseason in the gym, putting on muscle and getting stronger. And ever since Detroit did what you're watching here on these videos and uh, going after him and being, you know, hard fouls and lame beer, elbowing him in the grill and knocking him on the ground, he won six NBA championships <laughs> as a result of that. If they had just not poked the bear, maybe Michael Jordan doesn't become the greatest player of all time. So if the idea is to poke the bear yeah. and make Patrick Mahomes, you know, concerned about where's the cheap hit coming from, it didn't work out for Detroit at all. And as a long-suffering Nick fan, we tried the same damn thing against him, and we couldn't beat him either. But I like Antonio Pierce because it's, it's, it's much like the Rex Ryan effect. You talked about it last week. When Rex Ryan got the job, he says, I don't give a damn about Bill Belichick. <coughs> so this is what Antonio Pierce is doing to this organization yeah. in this locker room. We don't give a damn about the Chiefs or you Patrick better. Holmes. So you have, to, you have to now put a, in, a, in, a, in their mindset, it's easy to be aware of who the Giant is, but you still got to face the Giant. And when you go against the Giant, you got to knuckle up and you got to go right at him. You can't walk around him. So he's trying to build this team up for, like he said, from a spiritual standpoint, a mentality standpoint, and a physical so, standpoint. I'll tell you the truth. And let, I, I got, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. But this is why it's significant that loss that the Chiefs suffered against the Raiders at Christmas. Because he said he walked into that business and said, listen, we know who they are. We know what their woes are. But we got to be more man than them. And when you saw the second half of that game, they didn't throw the ball. They ran it down in their throats. And we talked about this Chiefs defense being second in the league. They went right at them. So I love the fact that Antonio Pierce yeah. is saying, hey, damn who they are is what we got to become. And he did. And he was yeah, there's, to a, talk there's about a great it. story about uh, uh, Buddy Ryan and the Philadelphia Eagles when they had uh, Reggie Brown and, uh, excuse me, Jerome, Jerome Brown, Brown and Reggie yeah. White and Seth Joyner and Andre Hopkins, uh, Wes Hopkins and Andre Waters and that badass defense, right? Right? And the, the legend in Philadelphia was that Buddy Ryan said to that defense, every half, I give you one free 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty. Take it when you want to take it. Well, glad. And I the idea that. of that was exactly what Antonio Pierce is talking about. Now, in today's era, we're like, that's such a stupid penalty. Yeah. Why would you do it? But Buddy's rationale was, I'm going to, if I do it at the right time, I get inside their head. Yes. And if I can get a guy like Patrick Mahomes worrying about, even after I throw the ball, am I going to get laid out? Mm. Maybe there's a play late in the game where that benefits. So me. I have a cautionary tale for this team as well, the Raiders, is this sounds a lot like the Ravens heading into the AFC Championship game. Do you remember, oh, they're the bullies. We all yeah. thought they were going to win. We're going to make sure Mahomes feels us. Well, guess what? There's a 15-yard penalty, there's another 15-yard penalty, there's another 15-yard penalty. They had 45 yards of penalties just, quote-unquote, making sure Patrick Mahomes yeah. feels us. And it really went wrong for them in that game. Well, yeah. it did. It, it did. Always pro violence. Hang on. Yeah. Always pro violence. It, it did and it didn't. Correct. That's what it I It did saying. because they lost the game, so there's no payoff to doing it. But if you go back and you remember that game, what Ooh. happened in the second half of that game? Kansas City Chiefs are held scoreless. Five points. So if yep. the results are we don't want the Kansas City offense scoring, and I'm not equating it, you know, apple to apple, because sure, sure. it's not necessarily that you know, linear. But the reality is that they didn't score the entire second half. Yep. So if I'm Antonio Pierce, I'm pointing to that saying, stupid penalty, dumb penalty, sure. Fumble. Yeah, you're right. But guess what? They didn't score. But they might 100%. not have scored the first half if it wasn't for the couple of those penalties. Also true. Yeah. yeah, but I also, to your point, if I'm Antonio Pierce, I'm turning our tape in the second half, and I'm watching what 
that uh, that Baltimore defense did. They got after him. They got after him in a way where they got scoreless. And Patrick Mahomes, and much part, especially in the part of that second half, he looked bewildered. He didn't know where they were coming from. I'll say this, though. And one of the things that makes the greatest of all times the greatest of all times is you saw it happen. You know, Antonio Pierce is referencing Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan got pissed and yeah. went on and won three in a row, took a break, three in a row, yeah. won six, right? He seems to be the same kind of dude. Yeah. If you get this guy angry, and I'm not saying you should be afraid of him, like hit him. I'm down with it. You know, take a late shot. You know, make him feel it, right? But I think we've learned a lesson. You get that dude mad, you're going to lose. Yeah, but I think I like Antonio Pierce from the standpoint. At some point, you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Sure. Right? And if you're, the, if, you're the, if you're the Raiders, you got this new building. You just had your – you're in a suit, your own – you hosted the Super Bowl, and your team wasn't nowhere like close to even being a part of it, right. right? So there's motivation to be had. I think you try to tell well, the look, team, man, we can, be diff- we can be different. The Broncos beat them for the first time ever yes. in the Mahomes era. Yeah. The Raiders beat them. Easily. And now you've got Jim Harbaugh coaching the Chargers. So by default, you figure they're going to be better. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, one might say... Maybe Kansas City doesn't even win the division. But they win the oh, oh, I like it, Craig. Right? That was tough one every single that year. comes around. There you go. I love 